Sometimes in life, you can sense when there's a layoff coming. You can sense when your job's changing. Sometimes in life, you can sense when a relationship is over. Sometimes in life, you can sense when it's time to move locations. There's usually something, whether actual signs of feeling or a combination of both, where in life, you know, uh, the currents of life are changing. And so you have to decide, do you wait until it's totally done, until it's totally over, or, or do you proactively change? And like many things in life, there's no exact science. Science is collecting data, collecting information, studying it, and forming a conclusion. And you need that. Uh, and you also need to listen to your in intuition. You need to balance both. Don't just do one or the other. But I would tell you that I'm not talking about one specific thing in this video. But in general terms, what I want to share with you in life is that you will need to try to remember to stay a step ahead of the game. It doesn't mean bail out early. It doesn't mean operate off fear. It doesn't mean bounce around with no direction. It means when you're under self-control, when you're looking at the information and you're studying all avenues you can take, that you are aware in times that there's certain periods in your life where you have to proactively change uh, in order to move forward um, because there's a season of your life that's over. And that's the message. Uh, in two minutes, I gave it to you. I wrote it down on my phone and I showed up. I could have made a video today and just said, how's your Friday? How's your weekend? And I'm going to do that now in the live feed. But there's a reason that you have uh, an idea for a video. Uh, one is through my life experience. This is true. Uh, and the other thing I realize is what I just saw in the supermarket. Uh, an older lady checking her list. You know, when you write something down, you're 80% more likely to do it because your mind goes in so many directions. If you don't focus your mind, if it doesn't have clear objectives, then you will get stressed out but do nothing. Okay. So I want you to be very cautious in life that you structure what you're trying to do by writing it down. And I, I don't use pen and pad anymore, very rarely. I mean, I write things down on my phone or on a laptop. And when in doubt, follow that instruction. Okay. When in doubt, prioritize your tasks uh, in your personal life, your business life, etc. Because in this world, that's how you get stuff done. Uh, and when you have a big change ahead of you, moving locations, changing a job, uh, getting a divorce, God forbid, or whatever you you know, th these are just examples. Nothing that's going on right now in my life, but these are examples of some things that have gone on in my life. And I can tell you that you got to break a big goal or a big event down to small steps. That's how you avoid getting overwhelmed. That's how you avoid just burning up energy without making progress. Because believe me, even when you do everything right, there's failure, there's setbacks. And so the only way to get back up with direction is, okay, where did I leave off? Where did I leave off on my priorities, on my tasks? And what do I need to do next? And then you take it one step at a time, one day at a time. And over time, when you have that philosophy, manage your time. Manage During the day, manage your time. You say, I'm going through a bad thing. I want to keep looking at my screen to hope it gets better. You better push yourself. Even when you're suffering, push yourself to the next task. Because before you know it, the day is over. And if you just wallowed in that obsessiveness, obsessive compulsive disorder without discipline, without time management. That's how you waste days and that's how you waste your life. You appreciate these videos. Please click that thumbs up. I want to thank all my members. I see Sophie in here today. She's a member. Thank all my members. Shout out to you. Uh, if you want to be a member, click that blue join button. Let's go to all the live comments now. Happy weekend. As I make this, it's a Friday. Happy payday if it's your payday. Uh, thank you to all the gracious people. Uh, part of my YouTube channel uh, that leave a comment that don't. Uh, thank you. 
Luisa, good to see you. Thank you for your positive comments. Happy Friday. My man, Infinity, great to see you. I appreciate your positive attitude. I want to thank you for everything, brother. I hope that you are doing well, and I truly appreciate you, brother. AR6, what's up, brother? How are you, man? Happy Friday. Charlie, very positive attitude. Good to see you tonight, Charlie. Charlie, don't forget to hydrate. Charlie, you're a good man. Shout out to you, man. Let's take a hydration break. Yeah, drink water. Okay, what do I have during the day besides water? Well, I have coffee. Uh, usually three cups of coffee per day. They say the average, you're allowed to have four cups of coffee per day with, within the caffeine guidelines. And I have small cups uh, with steam soy, no sugar. Um, and I know soy has a little bit of things in it, but guys, I'm not trying to, I already lived a life where I ate nothing but like water or vegetables. I'm not doing that. And I also lived a life where I ate nothing but fast food every day. So we're balancing it. Okay. Balance. That's the season of life. But so coffee, I drink with no sugar and I have two diet Cokes per day. And I know that has a little bit of aspartame. And sometimes when I go to a healthier store, I don't get Diet Coke. I get, you know, they have like, now they even have something better than Diet Coke, these natural things. But, uh, and that's it. You know, that's pretty much my day. Just sharing that with you. Let's go to the next comment. Uh, Power Stroke, what's up, man? Hey, Sam. Good to see you too. Thank you, Power Stroke. Charlie, hope you had a great day. I did. I hope the same for you, brother. Sophie, gracious member. Good to see you. Thank you for your comments. Hello. Glad to be here live. Great to have you, Sophie. You've been a great addition to the channel. Love and respect to you. Power Stroke. Thank you, everyone. Hit that like button and subscribe. Power Stroke. Thank you for the positive direction. Van Life. What's up, Gina? Van Life. Gina, hello to you. Van Life, Gina. Gina, shout out to you. Hope you're doing well. You say inspirational nomad. Tell me something about the nomad life because uh, that's how I started watching your channel. Well, this is what I would tell you. Live in the current car you have. Keep a job. Pick up a side job. Don't buy anything for a couple years. Why? That's how you get ahead. How do you get behind? Uh, quit your job or don't get a job, uh, buy a new vehicle to live out of, or keep buying vehicles. And eventually that's how you end up in destitution. Um, you're going to, even if you do traveling, which I did up and down the coast uh, a couple of years, but that was even calculated. I could tell you though, once you do a couple times around the country, you're, you're, or wherever part of the country you want to go, you're going to figure out where you want to live. So just remember that. Uh, and just remember you can live in your vehicle indefinitely. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you should always prepare to get off the road if you need to, or if you want to. Um, and I don't like window tents. Okay. I see too many people with window tents and they don't even live in their van and they're suspect. So, uh, that's just some general things I want to share with you because you have to keep the energy going. You say inspirational nomad. I want to be a YouTuber. Well, one is I'll look at your channel and I see if you upload consistently. If you don't, don't tell me you want to be a YouTuber. Tell me you want to be an unemployed person or someone who's disabled who thinks they want to be a YouTuber. A YouTuber is a job, a side job. Don't make it your main job, but you have to treat it like a job. You got to show up daily. You got to have a priority list and you got to discipline yourself. You got to do things. Um, you, you got to make thumbnails. You got to make videos daily. You got to have structured topics and you got to engage. You got to answer comments, not just in a live feed, but on your regular videos. I see people, they got like 10 a hundred, a couple hundred subscribers. They don't even answer every comment section. I mean, you guys should be on fucking top of that. I mean, you know, come on guys and girls, the, uh, 398 today under 400 pounds. Now my 620 to 220 pound journey continues. Well, Doug, that's very heavy. I mean, it'd be 620 pounds is damn near close to death. So you definitely have to monitor how you're losing weight. Because, and you definitely have to monitor how you're going to sustain it. Uh, and I would recommend, that's something that I would, I would see a doctor somewhat regularly. I would definitely be in some type of dietary support group because 600 pounds is, you know, my highest I was, what was it? Was 300, close to 350. So I could, doubling that, I mean, you could probably barely walk at, at 620. Uh, so that's definitely something that is, is a lifetime thing, which is fine, but that's definitely something that you need to structure, uh, just like a job and that's your job, self-care. And you got to kind of really to stay on top of that because, uh, that's, you know, that's a lot. Uh, but I love that you're, 
uh, focused on it. I love that you have a positive attitude. And remember one day at a time. That's the one of the biggest things in life. I don't care if you're a drug addict, a foodie, or uh, a fucking maniac. One day at a time, guys. All right? <laughs> I love you, Doug. Good luck, brother. One day at a time. D Forrest. One of my newest members, D Forrest. Even changed the tag name. I love that. Hey, what's up, Appleton? Hey, happy Friday to you. Glad I can be here on Friday night. D Forrest, you've also been a blessing as a member. I want to thank you. I hope you're doing well. What's your goal this year, D Forrest? AR6, I'm doing well on this Friday. That's awesome. I've got a bunch of exams next week. I'll pray for you. Uh, how should you prepare for an exam? Well, usually there's some type of, uh, uh, if you do enough research, there's some general idea of what's going to be on the test. If you already took a similar test or the same test, uh, you know, study the questions that you got wrong um, and just manage your time to allocate a half hour. I would say study in half hour increments. So every day, if you were preparing for a test, I would study in two half hour increments. I would study a half hour before noon and I would study in half hour before 8 p.m. If you're studying, you know, too early or too late, your mind's not absorbing it. Why? Because your mind is like any piece of machinery. When it's very early, your mind is just starting. It's priming the pump. When it's very late, your mind is shutting down. You don't want to put too much demand on it. Your mind is a generator. So you want it right in the middle. You want it balanced. You know, they say the most productive human hours in the day are 8 a.m. to noon. That's when your body is starting to rev up and, you know, noon is prime. During the day, the cycle of the sun and the earth rotation, noon to 3 p.m. is the hottest portion of the day. Okay. Why? Because that's the peak exposure to the sun. So... You know, everything in life is a cycle. And this is what I mean by time management. You know, you have to understand time management. You don't wake up and go swimming in the ocean at 8 a.m. Now, you could, depending on if you're a surfer or if you're fishing. But if you were going in the ocean to cool off, you go between noon to 3 p.m. Why? This is the cycle of the rotation, of, you know, to get the most out of the refreshment. So everything in life, guys, has cycles. You understand what I'm saying? Good job. Power stroke. Great job, Doug. I agree. Just one step at a time. Good job, power stroke. Good job, encouraging. Charles, what's up, brother? Way to go, Doug. I also agree. Good job encouraging, Doug. We love you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Power Stroke. Mavano, what's up? Nice dog. Nice job. Doug, I agree. Doug's awesome. Good job. Doug, thanks, all. Sam's positivity and truth help. Well, Doug, you're doing the work, so we respect you. We love you. We know that it's not easy. You know, look, if, when you're 600 and something pounds or even above 300, you know, it's almost like you're battling a drug addiction, okay? And food is your drug. Neurologically, sugar and cocaine almost have the same effect. I, I remember when I was uh, getting out of obesity and I was, the biggest thing you got to do is not go to the gym. It's research nutrition and control your diet and go for a walk. But I remember when I was studying nutrition, because I you know, pretty much grew up on fast food or whatever, for the most part. When I was studying nutrition, I remember there was one thing about sugar and I was never into sweet sweets, but you know, you don't realize so many things have sugar in it. Okay. Uh, you know, soy milk has sugar in it. Uh, you know, uh, there's so many foods that have added sugar. You don't realize, but I remember reading this article where they, they said that they, they tested mice and they got the mice addicted to cocaine and they got the mice addicted to sugar. You know, they had two different study groups. And so they tried to figure out what was more addictive, sugar or cocaine. And putting the two different groups of mice through the experiment, it was harder for the mice to break the sugar addiction than the cocaine addiction. So guys, food is a drug. Okay. And there's a lot, there could be mental problems involved with that. There could be uh, a variety of problems. Um, you know, but look, so can anorexia. Okay. So everything guys, there's so many sides of life. I mean, it's amazing. So you just got to do the best you can. Uh, back to live comments. If I miss a comment, please type it again. Don't take it out of disrespect. Power stroke. One day at a time is correct. Sam, you're on fire tonight. Power stroke. Steve, when are you going to do a private beach video? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, right now that's not my plans. Uh, 
you know, so I'm just right now, I'm just taking it one step at a time, one day at a time. And I'm uh, just good to go from there. And uh, that's kind of my plan. Uh, Hal, what's up, brother? Hal, great to see you. Shout out to Brooklyn. Thank you for being a positive, awesome person, Hal. Marcy, good to see you today, Sam. Good to see you also, Marcy. Power Stroke, let's get the likes up, fellas. I appreciate that. Got 42 people watching, 16 thumbs up. At least that's what I see on my phone. Uh, three people leave the chat when you ask them to do anything. Why? Remember, guys, most people don't want to do shit, want everything for free, and want to direct your channel. And what do I tell them? I'll do it whenever I want, okay? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just like you'll click that thumbs up whenever I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Power Stroke. Yeah, 99 cents. Power Stroke, I want to thank you. In a world where the Dollar Tree is a dollar twenty-five, and you got to put a quarter in Aldi's shopping cart, if you drive a Lexus and you shop at Aldi's, you need, okay, to buy the biggest dildo, okay, and get over yourself. Because if you have a luxury car and you shop at all these, it's, it's insanity. Okay? That's all I want to tell you. So, I love everyone. I want to thank you, Power Stroke. Power Stroke, you're seen. I appreciate your super sticker emoji, Power Stroke. I hope you get the full attention. There's nothing more disgraceful than being in a strip club, tipping the stripper, and she walks so quick by you, you didn't get a damn dime worth your tip. I remember seeing some lazy strippers like lazy comments. They ask you to do everything. They do nothing. Yeah. I want to tell you guys, have you ever met a stripper that doesn't click the thumbs up, <laughs> but they want to tell you about how to tip? I want to tell you guys. And the, stripping is dead too, guys. I hate to tell you. I mean, guys, no one's doing stripping. You know, even fans only is almost over. So look, everything in life changes. This is life. Okay. Uh, but, you know, some things always stay the same. Okay. Uh, what are you going to do? Thank you again, Power Stroke. DeForest, my goal, this was DeForest, DeForest, very great member, goes, my goal is to declutter and tidy my apartment, love that goal, and study the next six months to take the civil engineering PE license exam. Spoke to someone last week, and that's a civil engineer, and I'm not sure, my man Charles, I don't know, I know he does some civil engineering, so he may have some information for you, so D. That's a great goal to declutter. Why? When you declutter, your mind can focus. You don't have to worry about the stuff in your closet because you have nothing or very little in the closet. Now you can focus more brain capacity on your civil engineering. The less you have, the more you can focus. The less you have, the more you can focus. I mean, that's why I was even you know, very uh, slow and deliberate in buying a home base because I understand the more stuff you have, the more you have different focus. But, you know, I've had extreme focus for five years, so it's balanced now. But when when you need to get stuff done, you need to focus. Okay? Focus, fucking laser focus. Okay? So good job. The, there's a course more I'd like to do in next year. But I learned from you that I must do things in order. Slap that keyboard, brother. Look at that phone jiggle. Have you ever smacked that ass and see that wave? Now, look, I don't want to get too rough, too explicit. But in this world, you better do a couple things. You better do things in order, and you better masturbate daily. Why? Because if you're taking an exam and you haven't masturbated, you're going to go there all excited to take an exam, but then you're going to start thinking about someone in the class that you could see their panties. You say, well, I'm not a man. I'm a girl. DeForest, I'm a girl. Well, yeah, you're probably then not going to think about the ugly sloth men that are in there. But, you know, you may think about dark chocolate. So just remember, whatever you got to do, you got to flush the reproductive system. Because if you're a woman and you're taking the civil engineer exam and you're 32, you're thinking about having a baby. Okay, when after you get the exam done. If you're a man and you're 32, you're thinking about banging someone. I mean, so, you know, as far as like, you know, so you got to be careful. What I want to tell you guys, I know very smart people with engineering degrees, basically. And all I can tell you is flush your reproductive system, masturbate. Because if you get a civil, if you have a, a six figure job, but you got too many kids, you might as well just work at Walmart. You might as well have a 10% DoorDash rating. You might as well live in your car and tint your windows. I want to tell you something that's not in college. 
Masturbate regularly if you're a man. Because, I mean, having too many kids doesn't matter what your job is. And then if you're a woman, remember your body, your reproductive system is different, but still same premise. You, you have a monthly period. And that's your reproductive system flushing. And when your reproductive system is at the end of the egg cycle, when you're about to go through menopause, or really when you're in your 30s, your, your reproductive system is sending off neurological alarms that, you know, it's time to have a baby. It's time to have a baby. I remember dating an Asian MILF and she said, Sam, I don't know what I was thinking when I was in my 30s. Like I had had a baby. I'd have a baby. And what I could tell you guys, you know, when you're a girl and you're in your thirties, you're thinking about having a baby. It's like a, a day trader with like, you know, you got buy, sell signals. I mean, you go crazy, you buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. You going crazy. And I want to tell you guys, be careful because the mind will take it to a whole nother dimension. Okay. You're not even ready for this. AR, thanks for the vice. We'll do. You're killing it. Power stroke. Thank you again. Power stroke. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Power stroke. Oh, Charles. Yes. Charles. This is Charles giving you some information here. Uh, he goes, having that PE license is a very valuable as a civil engineer. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. I mean, look, having a, any certification is valuable. A driver's license is a certification. Okay. A driver's license cannot just help you get to your job. It can, you can be a truck driver. You can be a door dash deliverer. Uh, you can deliver medical supplies. You can be an Amazon driver. You can do so many things with a driver's license. It's a certification. But if you don't use your driver's license as a certification, it's it's meaningless, right? So that's why I tell you, don't just go to school to get a certification. Because it's you got to look at it like a driver's license. This is the first major certification you get in life as a driver's license. First major one. So, when you go to college, you're spending money, okay? And you have to be conscious that that's an investment. It's like buying the S&P index. And you have to know the average return and how long it takes. You know, so, you know, you should be doing something in that engineering format and, and working there already, doing something, because that certification will help you maximize your revenue in that industry. But if you're not even working in that industry, working very hard to get a certification could be hustling backwards. Because the hardest part about any job, whether you're a civil engineer or Amazon delivery person, is showing up every day. The hardest part about any job is getting along with people. The hardest part about any job is time management. And I want to remind you that those are things you really got to focus on even before the certification. Good job. D, I just turned 28. Good job. I'm a dude in Massachusetts. Okay, so here we go. So 28 male, this is deforest in Massachusetts. So that masturbation tip is welcome. Yeah, your hormones are out the wazoo at 28. I do have a girlfriend. Okay. And she helps with that. Yeah, well, she's 28. In another four years, you're going to be helping her with something. Uh, but I also know I need to manage my time I spent with her. You right? Because, you know, the average male usually dates a, a girl that's anywhere between two to six years younger than him. Usually around four years is the average younger. So if you're 28, probably she's 25. So you got about another five years before she's ready to have a baby or start talking serious about it. So, you know, that's okay. You know, just, just be mindful. D, can't waste a whole day in bed with her. Need to be productive. I remember, I, you know, when I was in my 20s, I fell into that seductive trap. You have a girl, you, you, yeah, you don't want to go to work. You spend all day with them. Uh, what I could tell you guys, you know, it's okay once in a while. Uh, you know, enjoy that. But what I want to tell you is, you probably won't, they won't even be in your life in your late thirties. And if they are, they may be a pain in the ass. Um, this goes for men and women and men and women know this. I know, I know people that got married, people die. You got to learn to enjoy your day by yourself. You got to learn to masturbate by yourself. Then if you can add someone to your life, love them, respect them, 
Think about their interests, not just yours. But you still better learn to enjoy your day by yourself. You still better learn to have your own interest. And you still better learn how to masturbate by yourself. Because if not, you're always going to be by yourself, even in a relationship. I learned that. D. Uh, thanks, Charles. I work as staff engineer now. That's exactly what I was talking about. Work in the industry you're working before you get the extra certification. Uh, there's so much to learn in the field of civil engineering. I agree. You need a minimum of four years experience to be eligible to take the exam, which I have. Same thing with electrical license exam. So good job, D. You're killing it. Power stroke. Sam, spitting that straight facts. Well, I'm trying to give you some practical information that can help your everyday life. In addition to some entertainment, in addition to showing what I preach, which is one is show up, two is structure your life, three is you better take care of yourself. Don't even depend on people to take care of you, whether encourage you, support you, or click the thumbs up. Why? Because remember, guys, most people, they fail at step one, take care of themselves. And I have too. So this is a hard, you know, this is a hard lesson you learn. Jesse O, one of my first ever members, Jesse. We made it till Friday. I want to thank you for everything, Jesse. You've been amazingly gracious. I hope that your week was good. I hope that your house is good. I hope that your investments are good. I hope that your health is good. Uh, I, you know, someone said today, and I agree, look, when you're health and you have a level of financial um, stability, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. So cherish that. Work on that. Work on your health and your financial stability. How do you make money? You have a job. How do you make more money? You have a side job. Notice that I didn't say anything about investments yet. How do you lose money? You chase investments and you don't have a job or that's it. Or you gamble or you do drugs or you have too many kids. I'm not saying you can't invest. I'm not saying you can't gamble. I'm not saying you can't have kids. I'm not, you, I'm not saying it depends on what drug you want to do, but I'm just trying to tell you, make sure you do things in order. How do you make money? Have a job. How do you make more money? Have a side job. Then do what you want from there. Good job. Jesse, Sam. I think you're famous. I saw a video on YouTube about you. Well, that could be a good or bad thing, but uh, what I want to want is thank you, Jesse. What I, I would love YouTube without the fame, but it's just not life uh, because really I'm more private than social. Uh, but it is what it is. You know, I I can't think of things like that. I can't look at things like that. Why? Because you know, like you know, you become too self conscious. You know, you. It's like you dance like no one's watching. I don't want to know who's watching. I don't want to know who's making videos. And I'm not saying this negative towards you. I'm saying a mindset. Because I know life. Some people praise you. Some people hate you. And everyone has their own opinion. And so have I to other people. So I just keep doing my thing. I stay focused on me. Uh, taking care of myself. Self-care is top priority. Uh, channel is number three. Uh, Self-care, main job. Uh, and, you know, YouTube is after that algorithm. Uh, way after. Uh, thank you, though, so much, Jesse, and thank you to everyone on YouTube. So, look, YouTube has been a blessing to me, though. I want to say that, too. I respect it, and I try to show I respect YouTube, and I respect my viewers, my members, those who have been gracious to support me. Why? Because I show up every day, and I try to give value, entertainment, information. Uh, so, I'm not, I'm fair on YouTube. I respect it. I appreciate it. I'm grateful for it. Um, but I'm also fair that, you know, you need the main job. You need your self-care. Uh, everything in order. Charlie, so true, Sam. We have to try to encourage ourselves. Without that, you get screwed in life. And it's your own fault because, and I've been there, because we, we do things out of order. Your first step of life is to take care of yourself. But that doesn't mean not have a job and stay home all day and do nothing. It means take care of yourself. And part of that means being productive at a main job or whatever you're going to do. Because you feel better when it's payday and you got paid. You feel worse when you didn't do anything and you, and you got no pay or very little. You feel worse. So you got to take care of yourself. D, I'll admit I'm not sure how long my girlfriend and I are for each other. There are some differences in our long-term values and goals. Well, that's a big problem, which we've talked about. You could talk about till the cows come home. But this is what I learned. Have you ever tried to talk to a wall? You get the same effect when you talk to someone with different long-term goals. You could talk all you want. It ain't going to change. People don't change. Uh, so, but I, I understand what you're saying. You got to go through this yourself, but we were having fun in the meantime. I respect that because I've got to live my life and experiences. So, so do you, uh, respect and love. Just try not to bring a kid into the world with her. If you know you're on different pages. D 
An unplanned pregnancy would throw a wrench in things. Well, make sure you wear a condom, get a vasectomy, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because, you know, guys, when, when you're in the warm waters of Lake Dakota and, you know, there is nothing more satisfying than a cream pie. Uh, however, there is nothing more serious than the consequence of a cream pie. So you better remember that. Charlie, great discussion. Uh, Charlie, I appreciate you. D, thank you for the encouragement, Sam. D, you're doing a great job. Very proud of you. Thank you for sharing tonight. Jesse, YouTube recommendation game is on point. Well, Jesse, you're on point. You've been a huge blessing to me, and I'll never forget you. Uh, like I said, first member, uh, you've been amazing to me. Again, I hope your house is well. I hope you're well. I hope everyone out there is well. Doug, we love you, brother. Thank you again for sharing. Um, look, yeah, I hope I help you guys a little bit and girls along your journey. I, you guys have helped me and girls. Uh, I want you to learn to encourage yourself, to show up, to structure your life, and to be proactive when it comes to some change. Uh, because you can't see everything coming, but sometimes you can see when the writing's on the wall. And that doesn't mean you should jump ship. It means you should do what you need to do to put things, a contingency plan sometimes in order, a backup plan, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but this is what it means, guys, to live below your means. That, that itself is proactive. When you live below your means, it's like, well, if there if something happens here, I got enough buffer. You can never, com uh, you know, you can never completely prepare for a complete disaster. But remember, we got through another day and it probably wasn't a complete disaster. You know, how many days, guys, people are waiting for a crash. People are waiting for a nuclear bomb. People are waiting for, you know, 5G to kill everyone. People have been waiting since the beginning of time for the end of time. And this is how you destroy your life. You wait for the worst of times and you steal your best of times. Don't be one of those people. Power stroke. Best therapy of I've had in a while being here tonight. Well, I appreciate your positive comments and thank you, Power Stroke, for your gracious tip. Jesse, to see Nick Cannon have nine kids with four women and Mariah Carey as one of them is sickening. Visectomy ads should be everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't like to see it. I mean, even though they got the money, they got the resources. You know, it's not just that. I mean, you know, what happened to Whitney Houston's daughter? She's got the resources. She's got the money. Look, you know, you know, and I remember Mariah Carey being in a tub on MTV Cribs talking like, you know, being on some crazy shit with a wine glass. You just have to remember, guys, look, if you got kids already, you, you know, that's fine. You can't go backwards. Enjoy that. But if you're still haven't had kids or you're debating having another kid, you have to think about, do you have the resources, the money? And then even if you have the money, are you dating Kanye West? Do you want to have four kids with Kanye West? You know you're going to divorce him. You know he's Elon Musk. You, you, Elon Musk been divorced three times. So you know that long term you're not on the same page. So don't put that burden on the kids. Uh, you know, now again, if you already had the kids, you can't go backwards. Okay. And everyone do what they want, guys. But this is my opinion uh, because everyone suffers. Now, can people overcome suffering in? You know, can miracles happen and can people better themselves? Of course, guys. I mean, so this isn't a final judgment, but I'm sharing that we have to be wise, okay, as best we can, okay, within our abilities and within our age, et cetera, et cetera. D, your videos about not being scared to work has finally shifted my mindset working in engineer. Well, congratulations, because the scariest thing is not to work, because when you don't work, then you have fear about everything. Rent's going up. You have fear about gas going up. Okay, you have fear about you're not going to get disability. You have fear. You just live in this fear bubble. So what do you do? You tint your windows and you live in fear. So when you don't have fear, guys, you don't tint your windows. Okay, why? Because, guys, you're not running. Okay, you're not hiding. You, you know, even if you're stealth parking, guys, if, if you work, you don't have to stealth park. Okay? Even if you want to. You understand what I'm saying? When you're not working, when you're not doing what you got to do, you, that's, the, that's the scariest shit you're ever going to live through in life, guys. So don't be scared to work. Believe me. Not working is a lot scarier than working. It's complete backwards algorithm. I can relate to praying on the job site. Yep. And the more you show up, the better it gets. And certain jobs aren't going to be from you. Someone left me a comment today. They said, I've tried to be an electrician two times. What do you think? Persistence beats resistance. You've said that. Well, it depends on your work history. You know, if, if I looked at your resume and I called all your ex-managers, have you been a problem child and not be able to keep any job? If that's the case, you may need disability. Okay. But I look back at my job, guys. I got decent reviews even when I work minimum wage. I mean, some jobs I didn't do as well as others, but 
you know, so you're not going to excel at every job, but if you're a problem child at every job, then yeah, you may need disability because there's no way. So, but you know, look, there's going to be some jobs you do better than others. And some you got to push past the learning curve. Good job. Uh, yeah. And that's correct. D the more you do something on average, there's exceptions. The more you do something, the more knowledge, then the more empowered, then the more confident you get. Good job. Power stroke. I'm 45, no children. I am an uncle to five nieces and nephews. That keep you busy. That works for me. Power stroke. Someone asked me sometimes, are you going to get another pet? I said, I, when I go to the park, I feed the birds and the squirrels. That's the last pet I'll get. And I love my dog. I still think about my dog, but I treat my dog like, a, you know, for me, my wife. I had one. Uh, my dog passed away and it took a lot out of me. Uh, I'm emotionally able to have another one, but one is it's a lot of responsibility to do the right way, a lot of time. And I wouldn't want to bring another dog into my life, just like I would tell you with a kid, unless you're really at that season. And I'm not. So I'm honest with myself. I'll feed the squirrels and the birds. Uh, Jesse, looking back, I'm so lucky I didn't get pregnant with my high school sweetheart. I understand. Too many single mothers out here. Yep. Look, my, my parents got divorced at eight. My mom raised three kids. She worked three jobs at times. And my father paid child support and, you know, so he didn't abandon us, but it's just life. So, but I would tell you this guys and girls, look, whatever your situation, make the most of it. But if you're still in debating the situation, you know, make the most of yourself, you know, uh, that's key. All right, guys and girls, I've been on here for almost 40 minutes. See what happens when you show up before you know, it's the end of the day, before you know, it's the end of the week or every other week you get a paycheck. Before you know it, you've now completed another year. Now you've completed another uh, pension credit, or now you've uh, created another year of income where that counts as your social security credit. So see, this is how life goes by. You say, well, I don't want to work my entire life. Well, hey, look, if you don't want to work your entire life, your entire life shit. So this is what you should do. In the beginning of your life, you got to pay your dues and you got to go through the learning curve. Then figure out how you can work where you want to live. Then figure out not have to have too much stuff so that you can enjoy when you're not working. Then, you know, and stuff including too many kids and pets. Then, look, you don't hate working. Why? Because work is just a balance of life. And when you're living below your means and where you want to live, you have more options. And you can pick up a creative side hustle, etc. But if you ask me, inspirational moment, is most people problem they work a job they hate? No, it's in a, they're in a relationship they hate, in a house they hate, with a life they hate. Their job is not the main problem, but they, they want to look at their job because it's the easy problem to point at. You know what I mean? And that's why I tell you guys, don't do that. That'll kill, kill yourself. D, have a great night, Sam. You too. Thank you for being a member. Thank you. Love. Power stroke. Thanks for the time tonight. Thank you, everyone. Pray for Doug. I want to acknowledge everyone in the live chat tonight. I want to say thank you. Okay. And I hope that my videos help you. You all help me, you guys and girls. Uh, I'm sorry if I hurt you in some way. I know that I'm not for everyone, uh, but best we just go our separate ways because I don't want to fight my inner circle, uh, but I'm very grateful. Okay, Thank you for watching. I'll see you next video.